Good afternoon, um, ladies and gentlemen, and members of the press. Um, the Monetary Policy Committee met on the 25th and the 26th of September 2017 against the backdrop of a relatively optimistic global economy. Committee examined the global and domestic economic and financial environments up to the third quarter of 2017 and the outlook for the rest of the year. The recent state of flooding and hurricanes in some parts of the globe, the flooding in Nigeria, and the increasing tension between the US and the North Korea, as well as the perception of hostilities in the Korean pen Peninsula, as, and the associated geopolitical tensions were identified as key risks to global output growth at this meeting. On the domestic front, the economy exited recession, which began in the first quarter of 2016, in the, during the second quarter of 2017, with a modest positive shot to medium-term outlook, resulting largely from deliberate macroeconomic stimulus and a stable Naira exchange rate, exchange rate. Inflation expectations also appeared anchored on the strength of prevailing tight monetary policy stance. Seven members of the MPC were present at this meeting. The external development. Global output is projected to improve further in 2017 as growth forecast by the International Monetary Fund in its July World Economic Outlook was projected at 3.5%, up from 3.2% in 2016. Output growth in some advanced economies, including Japan, the Euro area, as well as some emerging markets and developing economies, is expected to improve in 2017. Nigeria, Brazil, and South Africa all exited recession, while Russia is likely to exit recession in the fourth quarter of 2017 after a mild contraction of 0.57% during the second quarter. Growth forecast for the U.S. was revised downwards from 2.3% to 2.1% in 2017 as a result of the weak growth observed during the first quarter of the year. The MPC, however, noted some headwinds confronting the optimistic global growth prospects to include recent developments on the Korean Peninsula, the damage to the infrastructure caused by the hurricanes Harvey, Irma, and Maria, the law in Brexit negotiations, and the normalization of monetary policy by the US Fed which is expected to instigate global capital flow reversals. Other challenges include the continued slow pace of recovery in global oil and other commodity prices, and China's reduction in uptake of global commodities. In addition, the committee noted the tepid global inflation <coughs> momentum, implying that continued monetary policy normalization could be injurious to global growth prospects. The uptick in global inflation persisted, but moderated in response to rising oil prices, continued accommodative monetary policy in the advanced economies, and currency appreciation in some emerging markets and developing countries. Average inflation for the developed economies is projected at 1.9% in 2017, while it is forecast to average 4.5% in the developing countries, as prices are expected to moderate due to seasonal effects, the committee observed that the outlook for global monetary policy remains predominantly accommodative in support of recovery and growth. Data from the National Bureau of Statistics showed that real gross domestic product grew by 0.5% during the second quarter of 2017 in Nigeria, 
against the contractions of 0 0.91 and 1.49% in the previous quarters of 2017 and the corresponding quarter of 2016, respectively, marking the technical exit of, of the Nigerian economy from recession. Non-oil real GDP grew by 0.45% during the second quarter of 2017, driven largely by agriculture, 3%, industry, 1.1%, construction, 0.1%. The modest growth was attributed to fiscal injections from the implementation of the economic recovery and growth plan and enhanced supply of foreign exchange arising from improved crude oil prices. The committee also noted the positive outlook from the Purchasing Managers Index, PMI, for manufacturing and non-manufacturing activities, which stood at 53.6 and 54.1 index points in August 2017, respectively, above the 50 index points benchmark, indicating moderate signs of recovery. The committee further noted that although the recovery was weak, it was hopeful that the, that the active implementation of the 2017 budget could boost aggregate demand and employment. Committee noted that money supply M2 contracted by 11.06% in August 2017 analyzed in contrast to the provisional growth benchmark of 10.29% for 2017. The development in M2 is largely due to the contraction of 18.42% in other assets in August 2017. Similarly, M1 contracted by 12.25% in August 2017 analyzed to 18.37%. Net domestic credit contracted by 0.14% analyzed at minus 0.2% driven majorly by the net credit to government, which also contracted by 1.05% against the program growth of 33.12%. Credit to the private sector, however, grew marginally by 0.07% in August 2017, compared with the provisional benchmark of 14.88%. The MPC also noted the policy constraints in ensuring the flow of credit to the real sector in the face of weak and underperforming monetary aggregates. Inflationary pressure in the economy continued to moderate with headline inflation year on year, receding for the seventh consecutive month to 16.01% in August 2017, from 16.05% in July 2017. Food inflation declined slightly to 20.25% in August 2017 from 20.28% in July 2017, while core inflation increased to 12.3% in August 2017 from 12.21% in July 2017. This development was attributed to the contraction in money supply, decline in imported food and non-food prices, favorable base effects, and the moderating effects of stable exchange rates. The committee, however, noted that the high food inflation was traceable to rising prices of farm imputes and supply shortages, intermittent attack by headsmen on farmers, as well as weak harvest due to increased flooding of farmland. Money market interest rates oscillated in tandem with the level of liquidity in the banking system as the average interbank call rate, which opened at 18% on July 26, 2017, closed at 7% on August 31, 2017. The open buyback rate, OBB, opened at 15.03% and closed lower at 7.83% in the same period. However, the average interbank call and OBB rates for the period stood at 22.63 and 39.66% respectively. The movement in the net liquidity positions and flows reflected the effects of open market operation sales, 
foreign exchange interventions, statutory revenue payments to states and local government, remittances by Nigerian Customs and the Federal Inland Revenue Services for FAT meetings and the majority of CBN bills. Committee noted the continuing improvement in the external reserves position and the equity segment of the capital market. External reserves position grew to $32.9 billion at close of business on the 25th of September 2017, while the All Share Index rose by 7.2% from 33,117.48 on June 30, 2017 to 35,504.62 on August 31, 2017. Market capitalization improved by 6.9% to 12.24 trillion naira from 11.45 trillion naira during the same period. Relative to end of December 2016, capital market indices rose by 32.1 and 32.3% respectively, reflecting growing investor confidence due to improvements in foreign exchange management. Total foreign exchange inflows from the CBN rose by 1.98% in August 2017 compared with the previous month. Similarly, total outflow increased by 7.03% during the same period as a result of increased international remittances, inclusive of public sector and JVC payments, which rose by 58.59% in the period under review. <clears throat> Committee noted the trend towards convergence between the rates at the Bureau de Change and the autonomous foreign exchange market NAFEX segments as well as the stability of the exchange rate at the interbank segment of the foreign exchange market during the period under review. Similarly, the committee noted the success of the investor and exporters window of the foreign exchange segment and traced this not only to foreign investor confidence but also to the zeal and commitment of Nigerian exporters who have demonstrated preference for the window to the parallel market. Committee observed that the investor and exporters window has increased liquidity and boosted confidence in the market with over $7 billion in flow in the last five months. The committee will continue to introduce policies that will improve the confidence of foreign investors in the country's macroeconomic management regime. Overall outlook and risks. Available data and forecasts of key macroeconomic variables indicate a relatively positive outlook predicted, predicated on existing policy initiatives including the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan. Other potential drivers of economic recovery are the expected increase in government revenue arising from favorable crude oil prices, stable output, and general improvement in non-oil sector especially agriculture, industry, and construction. The intervention by the Central Bank of Nigeria in the rural sector is expected to continue to yield positive results in terms of output and lower consumer prices. The committee, however, noted some downside risks to the overall short to medium-term positive outlook for the economy. These include flooding with displaced farming communities and political agitations. On the external front, the hawkish policy stance in the United States, rising geopolitical tensions and sluggish output recovery in the Euro area and Japan could slow down the momentum of global output growth with significant spillovers to emerging markets and developing countries, including Nigeria. The considerations of the committee. The committee applauded the exit of the Nigerian economy from recession, but observed that the growth remains fragile and therefore hopes that complementary fiscal and monetary policies will sustain the growth momentum. The committee further expressed satisfaction with the gradual but consistent decline in inflation, noting, however, the substantial base effect in addition 
to the continuous improvement in the Naira exchange rate across all segments of the foreign exchange market and considerable improvement in foreign capital inflow. Committee welcomed the gradual implementation of the 2017 budget, especially the capital component of the budget, and urged increased momentum in expenditure directed at the growth stimulating sectors of the economy in order to reduce youth unemployment and restlessness. The committee, however, expressed concern on the sustained pressure of food prices, noting risks posed by flood, strikes, and insurgencies in various parts of the country to food production and distribution. Regarding the tepid turnaround in economic activities in the second quarter of 2017, the committee emphasized that the employment gains of recovery were still minimal, noting that a number of important job elastic subsectors were still weak and may require more fiscal support to regain traction. The committee, however, commended the federal government for issuing the executive order aimed at improving the ease of doing business in the country. It also noted the if efforts of the government to create jobs in the agricultural sector with the inauguration of the Presidential Committee on Jobs Creation, targeting at least 10,000 jobs in each state of the Federation over the next six months through a boost in agricultural support and funding. The committee enjoins the state governments to work with the Presidential Committee to actualize this plan without further delay. MPC also noted with satisfaction the directive of the federal government to all states to promptly pay outstanding salaries, salary arrears in order to boost aggregate demand. It commended efforts to clear outstanding contractual arrears, prompt settlement of trade disputes with certain unions of organized labor, including the Academic Staff Union of Universities and Health Workers, as well as the release of money to settle a standing entitlement of the SY workers in different Nigerian airways. These efforts, the committee reasoned, would improve aggregate demand and further strengthen the weak recovery. MPC restated its commitment to maintaining stability in prices, without which meaningful recovery cannot be achieved. In this regard, Members welcomed the gradual narrowing of rate spreads in the foreign exchange market and urged the bank to continue to monitor and respond proactively to threats and vulnerabilities in the foreign exchange market. On the outlook for financial stability, the committee noted that in spite of the banking subsector's resilience, the weak macroeconomic environment has continued to impact neg negatively on the stability of the subsector. The committee reiterated its call on the bank to su sustain its surveillance of deposit money banks activities for the purpose of prompt identification and mitigation of potential vulnerabilities. The committee also called on deposit money banks to support the quest to move the economy forward by extending reasonably low price credit to the private sector. In arriving at its decision, the committee took note of the gains so far achieved as a result of its earlier decisions, including the stability in the foreign exchange market and the moderate reduction in inflation. The option was whether to hold, to tighten, or to ease. These were subjected to extensive debate. As in previous meetings, Although tightening would help rein in inflation expectations and strengthen the stability in the foreign exchange market, the committee felt that it would further widen the income gap, depress aggregate demand, and adversely affect credit delivery to the private sector. The committee also noted that tightening may result in the deposit money banks repressing their assets and loans, 
and thus raising the cost of borrowing and therefore heightening the already weak investment position and non-performing loan condition of bank customers. With respect to loosening, committee believe that although it would make it more attractive for Nigerians to acquire assets at cheaper prices, thus increasing their net wealth and therefore stimulate spending as, as confidence rises, it nevertheless felt constrained that loosening at this time would exacerbate inflationary pressures and worsen the exchange rate and inflationary condition. Committee also felt that loosening will further pull the real rate deeper into negative realm as the gap between the nominal interest rate and inflation widens. On the argument to hold, the committee believes that the effects of fiscal policy actions towards stimulating the economy have begun to manifest as evidence in the exit of the economy from the 15-month recession. Although, although still fragile, the fragility of the growth makes it imperative to allow more time to make appropriate comp complementary policy decisions to strengthen the recovery. Secondly, committee was of the view that economic activity would become clearer between now and the first quarter of 2018 when growth is expected to have sufficiently strengthened and gains in receding inflation very obvious. The most compelling argument for a hold was to achieve more clarity in the evolution of key macroeconomic indicators, including budget implementation, economic recovery, exchange rate, inflation, and employment generation. In consideration of the headwinds confronting the domestic economy and the uncertainties in the global environment, the committee decided by a vote of 6 to 1 to retain the monetary policy rate, NPR, at 14% alongside all other policy parameters. In arriving at this hold decision, the NPC commits to employing maximum flexibility to guide the economy on the path of optimal growth. Consequently, six members voted to retain NPR and all other parameters at their current levels, while one member voted to lower the NPR to signal an ease to the current stance of tight monetary policy. However, overall, majority of the members expressed a strong commitment to policy flexibility that would allow the committee to promptly take the necessary actions that would promote overall macroeconomic stability and engender sustainable growth. Consequently, the NPC voted to one, retain the NPR at 14%, two, retain the CRR at 22.5%, three, retain liquidity ratio at 30%, and four, retain the asymmetric corridor at plus 200 and minus 500 basis points around the NPR. Thank you for listening. My name is Fred I report from LTV Lagos Television. My question is, Mr. Governor, for some time you have held uh, virtually all parameters in your decision. What time do you think will be right for you to vary your decision? And what condition, by way of inflation and exchange rates, exchange rate figures will warrant any change in your decision? Hey, Governor, my name is Udo. I work for Premium Times. So there's a report in the media that uh, it appears the CBN is overfunding the federal government beyond the threshold that is approved in the books. I don't know whether you can have a comment on this issue so that we know exactly whether the CBN is on the right track, uh, whether it's uh, against the issues that we have in the media. Thank you. Good afternoon, Governor. My name is Oyema from Business Day newspaper. Uh, Governor, uh, mine is on the rising non performing loan scheme, which you also talked about. Uh, is it possible you tell us the level of uh, NPLs in the banks as to speak? 
And then from, can you also um, tell us how vulnerable our banks are on account of this uh, rising non performing loans? And then whether you have seen any trace of insider abuse that has led to this? Good afternoon, Mr. Governor. Nancy Minaji. Morning, I will announce your DIT. Um, I will be asking you the question. I want to know how worried MPC is about our credit support to MSMEs and the private sector. Because as much as it's been done, different interventions here and there, businesses around the country still find it difficult to access credit. What is the MPC doing as a body to, I wouldn't say coerce at the banks right now, or you know, persuade the banks to lend? to the private sector to lend to businesses around the country without so much a constraint. The other question is, I would want to know if the CBN, uh, if the MPC rather, how ready the MPC would be if the geopolitical tensions uh, escalate, if external developments escalate, how ready would the MPC be? Would we have a buffer? Because geopolitical tension, US and North Korea, we also have the diplomatic ones around all producing countries and all of that, our affect our price. Are we ready to face any shock in case it happens? Thank you, uh, I'm just worried about the scenario I'm still at 22, 25%. I know some analysts that have spoken with me on the view that it should have been reduced, maybe so that they can have, uh, so that we can actually give money to the real sector and also looking at expansionary, expansionary benefits by giving money to the hands of people, maybe should have been reduced. Why do you? And this is still retaining that um, the same price. Thank you. How far has uh, NAPES met your expectations? Okay. Know that this is um, this is arising from um, what Premier Times took out from or called out of uh, the personal statement of one of um, our NPC members. The fact that NPC members are allowed to make personal statements without being coerced, without any censorship, should tell all of us or further confirm the fact that our NPC members are independent-minded people who, based on data presented to them, form their judgments and take their decisions at the point when we take votes. But I think I must say that the Nigerian Central Bank remains one of the most, based on this, remains one of the most transparent central banks in the world. Because if you read the personal, if you read other the statement, decisions of, of monetary policy by some other uh, monetary policy authorities, you will find that they are not as detailed of providing the level of transparency that we have displayed. But I think it's important that um, I stress the fact that um, <laughs> the federal government and the central bank, or central bank, we must realize that the central bank is not just banker to government, but also an advisor to the government. And of course, also a lender of last resort, both to the banks and also to the government. But Talking of issues that were raised, which one had to do with um, increase of purchase of treasury bills, there is nothing illegal in that because that is a normal open market operation activity that the central bank is allowed or DMO or Federal Minister of Finance is allowed to conduct uh, in line um, with its needs, in which this case the federal government, but for CBN in line with its determination to use OMO, OMO as an instrument to control money, money supply and then see to it that its own macroeconomic objectives are achieved. Now, on the issue of whether overfunding or not, let me state categorically <laughs> that the Central Bank of Nigeria has not overfunded the federal government. The federal government on its own decided that all its funds that are in banks, both local and foreign currency, should be moved to the Central Bank of Nigeria into the Treasury Single Account, the TSC like we all know. And, and I think it's important that we, we put it in perspective. If you own or you have you as a customer of a bank, 
you have fixed deposit in, a, in an account and for some reasons you want some spontaneous financing to meet your obligation your bank your own commercial bank you approach the bank and say look allow me to withdraw my account temporarily your bank will so this has nothing to do with central bank or any bank but the important thing and the assurance i'd like to give to you is this there is nothing truth there is no truth in issue of overfunding because whatever is overdrawn is much less or far less than what the federal government also has in its CSA account. So basically all this has to do with lack of understanding of the operation, uh, the banking operation or the operation of the central bank, uh, of operation of the central bank. But I think it's also important for me to stress this that at a time when the world, the global economy is faced by shocks, that has resulted in certain vulnerabilities in, 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 the group, in the global economy, that most central banks, whether they like it or not, do not have a choice but to come to the aid of their governments. Particularly when you consider what is the size of the balance sheet of the central bank relative to the GDP. In Nigeria, the size of um, our balance sheet relative to GDP is just about 23%. But I will give you the data about other banks. The People's Bank of China's the size of its balance sheet relative to GDP is 49%. In the European Central Bank zone or in Eurozone, it's 27%. The Swiss Central Bank is 95%. The Bank of Taiwan is 98%. The Bank of Japan is 104%. The Bank of England is 22% and the U.S. Fed is 28%. So if Nigeria's central bank balance sheet is just about 23, 23% of balance sheet, I think, it, it, I think it calls for no cause for concern or worry for anybody to begin to come to a conclusion the way um, the personal statements um, of an NPC member has been um, understood. Um, secondly, on the issue of that for a while we've been adopting uh, the hold parameter um, is will be holding constant and that hold will warrant a change in position. Let me also say that monetary policy authorities even in a year, if they must change their stance, will not more than maybe once or twice in a year. And what that means is that we should not expect, so there's nothing, um, um, nothing wrong or extraordinary in the NPC holding position or holding position constant for a considerably length, long period of time. But I think what we're saying is this, that we started 15 months ago from a point, at a point where growth was decelerating. Inflation had doubled from 9% in January 2016, right, to January 2017, from 9 to 18%. We saw the, the risks in the foreign exchange market and the massive depreciation that happened in the foreign exchange market at the point the market was at about 525 naira to the dollar. But with, by virtue of the fact that we decided and said, look, we would hold position, because before the point where we decided to hold position, we have taken some tight monetary policy stance, we began to see that growth has started to improve, albeit fragile at 0.55%. Inflation is moderating, although I would say slowly, to where it is right now from about 187 or so in January to 16.01% now. We've seen exchange rate appreciate from 525 in February to 360, in some cases 358 or 365, that range at this time. What that means is that certain, certain correct decisions have been taken and that there is a need for us to, um, to see to how, how far we will see to the positive
positive effects of those decisions. So we recognize, the NBC recognizes that, yes, there is a need to deal with the issue of interest rates, which is what we'll, we'll talk about. But we are saying that the, the, the communique itself explained in detail why it cannot be the way we expect at this time. We engaged ourselves, it was a very hot debate, we even invited people from outside the, outside the NPC to come give us their perspectives and that is what we would continue to do, to invite both practitioners, if you have come, we will come and engage you. If you are in the academia, the economists who are experienced, some of those who taught us economics, they will come and then explain their perspectives and based on that we'll come to a position as to what we think is good for our country and for our people. We are very conscious of the fact that there is a need to bring interest rate down, but we think that we are not there yet. Because if we reverse the trend, or if we do what most people expect, the truth is that it may, I don't want to say we would, it may reverse the gains that we have so far achieved in exchange rate stability and even in moderation of inflation. So that's the reason we thought, let's still wait and see to uh, how far we can go in these areas. Um, business that we talked about rising NPL. Is it possible to take it to, to, to talk about the size? We, the regulator, came up with the prudential that says the maximum NPL will be 5%. And I can tell you that majority of the banks still still cover around five or just a little above like five. A few of them, no doubt have gone beyond five, okay? And we are working with them, we are analyzing their, their, their risk assets portfolio towards seeing to read that this is corrected. And we must also understand, indeed, that we are doing the best possible to ensure that the banking system stability that we so badly desire, that it remains sustained. So we are alive to our responsibilities in this, on this, in this area and can assure all of us that we would continue to ensure that this, we, there is a sustained banking system stability. How well is NPC on the credit to SMEs? Um, what is that NPC doing? To coerce is the word. Nancy, unfortunately, monetary policy is not about coercing or it's, about, it's not about forcing. Monetary policy is about looking at data. Monetary policy is about um, um, using available information that you have to make prudential guidelines and regulations that must guide the operation of the, of the players in the banking and financial sector. Um, we realize the issues on the SMEs, and that is why Till date, we have inter uh, intervention facilities for SMEs, which I must say is even not up to 50% drawn. We are working with the banks, we are um, talking to them to try as much as possible to lower the risk acceptance criteria to a level where it can reasonably accommodate the SMEs. But the truth is, that aside from the SMEs, we are working with microfinance institutions. We are working with other non-bank financial institutions to see how micro, small, and medium enterprise facilities can be routed through them to these SMEs. Because we realize and agree that these SMEs constitute a, a major growth path for the economy. Um, I, I, will, I will know that you are worried about the CRR still at 22%. I think I've explained it. The CRR or the NPR or the OMO are all instruments um, with which we gauge money supply based on that take decisions that will guide the economy. So at this time, it's going to remain where it is, but at the appropriate time, I'm sure it will be adjusted. How far has NAFEX met our expectations? I think I must uh, say that NAFEX has um, worked far beyond our expectation, and we are delighted, just like we said in the communique, um, over $7 billion has come in five months. It gratifies us that um, 
confidence level is building, and all we can just do is to continue to work hard to ensure that areas where there are still a few um, great issues that um, that needed to be addressed would be addressed to ensure that there's maximum confidence that will engender further inflow of funds into the market to support imports and also to support the growth of the Nigerian economy. Thank you very much.